All right, for sure. What's going on, everybody? You're tuned into another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Leezy the Gifted. And I am super pumped for the guest that we have on the show today. Uh, if you are somebody who is really into content on Instagram and somebody who wants to learn how to grow on Instagram and you are just riddled with all of these questions on how to do that, I have got the guest for you. This is prism.hq, aka my man Jake. Yo, uh, yo. Jake, thank you for coming on. I've been on your podcast. You interviewed me. Now it's time for you know me to interview you. And so that's really good. Uh, what's going on? How have you been? What's up? Dude, I'm just uh, I'm on break right now, so it's everything is uh everything's pretty everything like school related is pretty uh pretty chill right now. But yeah, man, I'm I've just been working on tons of production stuff and um just getting better as a producer, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Dude, it just cuz like I'm so raw, real and authentic with this, like I just want to kind of discuss the amount of technical difficulties we've already experienced before even recording. Like, first of all, like we were, we were going and I was hella laggy and I was like, dude, we got to restart, I got to restart my computer. And then at the same time, bro, a garbage truck drives by and the furnace went on at the same time. I'm like, hold up. I got to go in the house and turn off the thermostat. <laughs> And then you're telling me, I want you to share what you were just sharing about your siblings, like what the yeah, deal is with all that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was recording a podcast with Adam Ivy or Curtis King or someone and um, someone, someone yelled like outside my room and just the amount of rage that went through me when I heard that noise and I had headphones on at the same time. Just got me so mad so i run i run outside and i start screaming and i'm like i'm like screaming like go play outside like or or just go somewhere else and and yeah it was really it was really awkward man i had to like i was like here just give me they were in little they were in the middle of a conversation and i was like just give me one second i'm sorry i run out as fast as i can oh. probably tripped on a couple like I don't even you were know. you were just you had you were on a mission for those few seconds like yo I gotta shut this noise down I I freaking feel you dude oh my oh. god and you have three siblings right yeah man that's crazy like, that's and they're all younger than you so that's like they're full of energy and they're bouncing off the walls like yeah yeah man uh, it's, dude it's crazy sometimes but but I have my little corner so it's all good. I feel like that's good. You got to have that space, dude. I once was exactly. on a freaking coaching call, like something I had paid for with Legion beats, one-on-one -on -one coaching call with Legion beats. Right. And with like Gabe Schillinger. Yeah. With Gabe. Yeah, right. This was like our second <laughs> convo ever. Um, like, and he's given me the, the juice, like the game, like of how to like, you know, build a business as a music producer. And like somebody yeah. came and walked up in here and was like, Hey, da, 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 da. and I muted my, I was like one second, I muted him and I got so like, I was like, yo, like you, I kind of explained to them, like I'm on the call with this dude who made a million bucks and he's teaching me how to make it. Can you like get the F out of here? And then I, I like, I like go back and I'm like, Hey Gabe, sorry. And he goes, exactly. <laughs> he goes like this, Gabe goes, Hey man, I feel you like, come on mom. Like I'm trying to like take over the world. Like that's what Gabe said to me. <laughs> He was like, don't worry, I've totally been there. And I was like, what a fucking chiller. So, uh, dude, that's so funny. That's such a Gabe thing to say. I know. Like, he's such a nice, he's such a nice fellow. Gabe's nice. a nice fellow. Okay. So that was the, you know, that was just the part I had to, we had to get that out of, out of the way. I mean, let, yep. let, let's talk though. Like, here's one of the reasons, you know, the way we got connected was through Instagram, right? Right. And I genuinely saw your posts organically off of a, off of a, you know, could have been a hashtag, page, could have been a repost, yeah. could have been the explore page. Yeah. One of those three for sure. Checked out your page. And I was like, wow, you know, th this, this is incredible. It's a great page and uh, very well branded, very well colored. Um, which usually, you know, I'm not big on that. Like I don't really care much about that stuff, but when I saw your page, I was like, okay, this is very interesting, very well colored, branded. The information is 
legitimately great. Like the infographics were really good. Um, and I think when I first saw you, you had like 5,000 followers, you know, yeah, you were, and, and I was like, well, this guy's obviously going to grow. Where are you at now? Um, 14.9 K. So slight cool. flex. Good yeah. There we go. Man. No flex on him. Yeah. That's great, man. Yeah. I mean, so you know how to grow on Instagram, like straight up. And, uh, yeah, man. it's been cool. Like we, you and I have done, like we did like that YouTube live stream. That was so cool. The YouTube. Where that we was were, dope, man. Yeah. Like we audited people's pages. Yeah. That yeah. was cool. We've done a podcast. We've done a lot of coaching together. You, I have hired you to make infographics. So for everybody who's been on my page and seen my infographics, I don't credit him on the, on the actual post, but Jake is the one who's made all my infographics. So big kudos to you for that yeah. too. Uh, can you talk about like, let, let's give some people some gems on just Instagram growth. Like first off though, why did you even start your Instagram page? Like what was the reason, what was the thought process behind it? Well, I've always kind of been, uh, into side hustles and entrepreneurial stuff and and you know ever since i was like 12 ish i've just been i was just looking at youtube you know like those those scummy drop shipping videos that are like yeah. here's how to make a business and make a billion make dollars and, thousand dollars in 14 yeah. days yeah like, it's I ridiculous hate man i hate, I hate that. that i looking back now man like i like like i've i'm really really don't trust almost any gurus gurus you know we've probably heard that thousands of times but yeah besides probably andy frisella gary v some of the guys that don't sell you stuff right. um but 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 yeah it, it's it there's a whole there's a whole thing that but i think um but yeah so i was i've been i've always been into that and so i started it just as a i never started it with the intent of i'm going to make this my personal account i wanted to start something mm -hmm. extra something off to the side okay. that would grow and that would support me as a producer and i've done a lot of like gone through a lot of changes and transitions and stuff as like a producer right um but but yeah man so i started that account and was at like a thousand followers in like three months mm -hmm. just from posting really bad content it's still up I didn't because. think it was bad. You think it's bad. I look at that and I was like, I don't think that that stuff was bad. You said you made it on like Canva or something, but I was like, look, yeah, looks good to me. Yeah, man. And I was kind of, I was, I mean, every, I had a routine man. like on the way to school, I would, I would, like, I would make a uh, Canva post. I started out actually, now that I think about it. I started out making those on my phone, mm. just completely on my phone. That's cool. And posting them in like, 30 minutes with the hat with copy and pasting the hashtags and everything. And I got like 300 likes like every time. So I was like, Whoa, this is crazy. Like mm. I'm actually doing something here. Um, and right, so it right. kept, it, it sort of kept going and it kept uh, increasing slowly. And then I've had, I had some, I've had some periods of like when, I mean, if you, if you look at my, I have like a follower graph that I, that I look at sometimes, like probably once a week uh -huh. and it's just like up and down. It's like a whole wave, like oh, just wow. the, the, the speed of growth. Like, yeah. And there was one point I was losing followers too. Like it's a mm -hmm. whole, it's yeah. a whole and there was grind, the algorithm. There was the algorithm changes too, which I'm sure you were affected by. Yeah. 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 And that is basically the algorithm, the quote unquote algorithm changes. Um, that is really what got me sort of changed my idea of what I want this to be you know what I mean mm, okay like um I realized like chasing followers mm. is not going to get me anywhere as yeah. a producer it's not going to build my career at all mm -hmm. just because I'm increasing the numbers doesn't mean I'm like benefiting myself at all or that right? person or that exactly right mm -hmm. so like and I saw this um I saw this, uh, I've, I've been on TikTok a lot recently. Yeah, um, me too. And I saw this artist and he, uh, he, he made this, he's made this dope song. Him and this uh, photographer, videographer made, collaborated and made like a cool TikTok video showcasing his song. So I checked it out, streamed it, checked out his Instagram. And it was like, he had like 4,000 followers and he just had like, no posts like no bio and it was just like hey are you serious check out my music check out my music yeah or he had like 
10 posts or something like that. But it wasn't like he wasn't going crazy on the content or whatever, huh. you know? And I think, um, and I, this, this goes somewhere, trust me. And so he, uh, and so I was like, why, why am I worrying so much about the way my profile looks when he's obviously focusing on the music more, right? Mm, okay. Gotcha. He's, I understand. He's putting more time into that music. Right. He's putting more time grinding in the studio than worrying about how his Instagram looks. You know what sure. I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I've been, it's sort well, of but like, that's, that's not always the right thing to do though. Right. No, totally. I totally agree. But I was, but, but you were like, doing the, sorry, keep going. Exactly. I was doing the opposite. I was you were doing the opposite. It's like 70% Instagram, 30% music. It's not but, ideal. But do, well, yeah, well, you're learn. you're in this learning. We're all like learning and like, that's kind of part of your learning, but dude, you, you got to understand something. Like when I won the Legion studio takeover, mm -hmm. every single one of the producers at Legion knows you. All of them know Prism HQ. Oh yeah, I know who that is. Every one of them. For real? Every single one. Yeah, I know Prism HQ. I'm like, wow. yeah, I had him on my podcast. Like, it's crazy, bro. He's like, he's just this like kid from North Carolina. Bro, that's they're insane. like, they're like, no shit. So like, dude, you you have you have crafted or carved like this little niche for yourself. I mean, you 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 know you've done something similar to what I saw with Omido beats. You know, you've done it on a little bit of a smaller scale. Like Omido right. built this huge following from beats because he makes fire beats. He got placements. Now when I had him on the pod, he was all about personal branding and he's got this brand new YouTube channel where it's him behind the scenes. He's growing that YouTube channel, like at a really great rate, very mm -hmm. similar to what you're doing. Like very I was like, Oh, okay. Like that's what Jake's trying to do. You know, can you talk about the way, like what you're going through now, the shift of what you're trying to do? Yeah. Um, yeah. Right now I'm focused on, I don't know. Some of my like more loyal followers have like realized that like, I am not as passionate about the content itself anymore, mm. but I'm more passionate about, um, I am passionate about the content, but I'm not as posting as frequently. I'm not really focusing on growth as much yeah um and i think it's important to balance right it's and and it's like people i mean we hear this all the time like i mean i've heard it's all about balance right like all the time like i hate that by right. the way exactly i hate generic it like, comes from yeah it's generic and it just comes from yeah i mean we're sorry to cut you he up. said we're it out. he said it so i have to say it. uh -huh, it's just yeah. like everyone's like ah uh -huh. I can well, about that all the time. Tell me about what you think of this. Like where I've struggled yeah. with, with stuff like that is like I've struggled because like there are these statements that definitely have truth to them, but the way they're framed and the way that they're said in the context yeah. is from a soft place most of the time. And it's from a fake place. Do you feel right. what I mean by that? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, man. That's so true. Um, and really annoys me. And then I end up saying some shit that's really mean, right? That's what we were talking about in my podcast where I said, I'm sorry. Cause I get so upset at the way things are said. Then I say them my way, you know, like I just, for example, like the word mental health day, like this year, mm -hmm. I used to think that that was just bullshit, but like, dude, the other day, like I had, I, I'm not going to talk about it, but like I kind of went through this experience Sunday night. Yeah. And like, I needed a fucking mental health day on Monday. And I was like, oh shit, this is real. Like, you do need that. But the way it's said and set up and framed, it's like, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know who am I to say who's earned a mental health day or not. I feel like I earned one. So if you feel like you've earned one, you can have it. But I just feel like terms like that are, it's so sticky. Cause I, beginning of the yeah. year, I was like, mental health day, that's a bullshit term to give yourself a break. But dude, like I, I took one on Monday. I was like, some, cause some shit happened. Yeah. No excuses. So, no excuses. Yeah. Like that's bullshit. So hundred anyway. percent every day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, but back to, sorry, we, we veered off back to like you and like the new direction you're going in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. And so, um, 
I mean, I, I'm here, I mean, I'm here to provide as much value as possible, but right. at the same time, I also want to, um, I want to be known as a producer. I don't want to be known as, you know, and obviously I'm, I'm keeping the prism name. Um, it's going to be Jake prism and then prism yep. itself is going to turn into something like Legion beats or something bigger. Yeah. Um, which will be dope because I was just, that's basically already ingrained in my producer name. So I'll have right. that sort of traffic towards that. And so, but, um, but, I mean, but yeah, man, it's go ahead. I mean, if, I, if I could give just my two cents on everything you've got going, I, I think that's cool that you're trying to go into the personal brand thing, you know, and, and, and I love that you're still keeping the prism HQ Instagram because right now that's really the key to, that's right. kind of the catalyst that's going to get your other thing more followers, you know, because that right. already has such an engaged following. So I would keep posting on the prism.hq Instagram page um, because it's such a great loyal page. You don't really have to do anything but post content on that page because like right. for other people, a lot of other people, their pages are in the stage of like, I need to work to grow. I need to go and do the dollar 80 strategy and interact on hashtags and comment oh, on 10. Yeah. You don't have to do that. You're really like in a good place. You're not lucky. You right. built it. So you don't have to do that. You post content and you grow from just that people share it organically. People post and tag you. Like you have that kind of keep that, like don't stop using that. But then like just once in a while, like shout out your personal page, like, yo, go follow the personal page. If you do that once a day on your story, like there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And likely people are going to follow it um yeah no well, that's my I, two cents it's funny it's it's funny like i've actually what i'm doing right now is turning because what i've realized is that prism itself is literally just me like there's no one else and i think you told me that too mm -hmm. <laughs> um is that is that a gallon jug right there <laughs> half gallon it's a half I drink, oh, okay. I'm drinking two of these a day. Yeah, I'm man, trying to. I've got a mason jar. <laughs> Very the cool. One I can find. That's so funny. Three, three mason jars is a gallon. So. <laughs> mm -mm. It's not. Let me see that wow. fucking mason jar. Let me see that thing. Hold that thing. Dude, up I looked it up online and it said three of these is a gallon. There's different it's, size it's mason heavy. jars true this is probably oh. the smaller size oh no but that looks like a good one my oh. hands are just joint, like huge so it's <laughs> oh you got big hands cool dude <laughs> so sick <laughs> this right. episode is I'm, this is one of my fucking favorite episodes i've ever done like this is so sick but like we're yeah. just two buddies chilling exactly yeah i'm sorry keep going now <laughs> yeah but anyway um where was that? Yeah. So on Instagram, like yeah. there are people that are trying to like replicate um, what we're doing and, or just what anyone's doing in general. Like there's, there's, there's probably about 20 to 30 producers that I've, that producers that I've seen that, that post content um, sort of like how I've been doing in the early stages. Okay. And I want to, and if you're thinking about posting content or whatever, or just providing value, first of all, know what you're good at, right? I am good at marketing. Um, and I know a lot about that and I'm good at um, growth. And I'm also good at like goal setting and like personal stuff and like all that, you know, like it's more of a, my page is more of a marketing mindset and then a little sprinkle of pr production stuff, right? right. But <clears throat> one thing that I'm not good at is mixing. I'm actually really bad at mixing. Like mm. I am garbage at mixing. And so for me to make a post about mixing, how does that, what, like, what does, what do my followers think when they see a like they see these dope marketing posts and they see this really shitty mixing looks like I'm just mixed posts and it looks like I'm just trying to running out of ideas or they think I'm losing right. content or, um, well, dude, a lot I, of the stuff, I don't, I don't first know of all, what I'm talking about, yeah, right? but a lot of the stuff you're saying right now is almost 
could be in your own head. You might not be as bad at mixing as you think, and your post might not be as bad. And people probably don't think, oh, is he running out of content ideas? Like, I don't think you know, one person yeah. sees that and yeah. thinks that. Like, I've seen your post recently. I've never once thought, thought that ever i'm just i just see dude most of the time i'm scrolling so fucking fast because that's what everyone does i look at a post and just take the post for exactly what it is i'm like okay cool mixing tip like that's it like you wasn't it you who posted i think it was you who posted like the purpose of reverb was that somebody else or was that you maybe that was producer focus somebody but yeah yeah, just any little like piece of insight is like a piece of insight like absolutely nobody is is like you're all those thoughts you were just saying, like, I guarantee nobody thinks that except you about your posts. Yeah, true. And that does, that does kind of go to show, man. Like, even if I completely dropped the prism, I could take everything that I already know. And, and I know I'm going to be successful, right? I just got to figure out the route that I need to take um, in order to do that. And I think there's a lot of producers that are like stuck on the fact that, Like, oh, no, if I lose this producer name or, you know, then I'm never going to succeed. And that's just not true. Mm -hmm. Um, I've definitely learned a lot um, over the past couple weeks, you know, Mm -hmm. um, as far as like production. I've definitely gone through like a phase, like through like sort of mentally when I'm like, when you you, have you ever had that that point when when you just kind of question yourself and like, do I really want to do this? Oh, you know, like, fucking yeah, last night. <laughs> I like, literally had like, that all last night. Yeah. Like, like, do I really want to do music? Like, is this something I really want to do as my career? And you think about that all the time. You know, like, oh, you yeah. overthink it. And for people oh, yeah. that experience that, like, like my advice to you, if you can relate to that, there's a reason you keep doing it. Mm. And subconsciously, you're doing it because you like it and you're doing it so much that it sort of becomes neutral or becomes sterile, whatever you want to, however you want to say, um, neutral. I, yeah. It, it, you eventually do it so much, it becomes neutral and then you realize, and then you don't really think about it. You, you're not really, even if you don't enjoy it all the time, mm-hmm. none of us enjoy like making music all the time. Right. Like, you know, there's, there's, when you're making music, you can get in the zone and then you get in your flow state and you feel good and you're having, you're jamming out, having a great time. But there's sometimes when it sucks. And oh my God. Yeah. But I would honestly say more often than not for me, it doesn't. I would say 90% of the time it's awesome. And then there's that 10% where I'm like, oh, yeah. this sucks. But it's, it's mostly right. Yeah. And I've gotten to this point too with me where I've made so many songs and done so much and worked so many hours that even the times when I make something that's not good, I'm not even upset at all, at all. Because I'm like, that's fine. That was just how it was. Like, you know, when you play video games, you'll have a bad yeah. game. I don't know. Yeah. What, like I'm thinking NBA 2K. That's like the game I used yeah, to play. Yeah, or Madden. Yeah. You're not going to have a good game every game you play Madden, every game you play 2K, but right. it's still fucking fun. It's 2K. Exactly. You know, same right. with music. Exactly. So it's, it's um, I really like what you said though. Like you come, like there's a reason you come back to it. Right. And that should be an indication of you should keep going. Exactly. And it's just you, it's just you overthinking. Like, um, like there is a, I mean, there's a reason I've been doing this for like a couple of years now mm-hmm. and no, I'm not going to stop because I, I enjoy it. And whether I want to tell myself I do or don't, that's, you know, that's sort of, it's all in your own head. Um, and, and, and for, and there's another, uh, there's, there's another thing that goes along with that is, um, I'm going to get all going to get all like I'm going to sound like one of those those stupid um spiritual gurus or whatever, you know, the Andy Frisella roasts all the time, but um <laughs> but there is there is something that I've definitely learned over the over the course of these these few weeks and it's and bro, it, this is crazy because it really changed like I can enjoy things more and like you, like this is just, this is outside of music a little bit. Um, but it it applies to it. Um, I enjoy things more because I'm not addicted, um, to dopamine. Do you know, do do you know that whole thing with dopamine addiction and dopamine can come from, um, like junk food, uh, video games, pornography, like anything like that. Um, that's where the dopamine comes from and if you take away those things that gives you the instant pleasure you're gonna 
really enjoy things like music production or making music much more. Wait, okay, time out. You know I mean? This is the shit I want to talk about. This is oh, dope. Okay. Fuck music for right now. This is what I okay. want to talk about. For no, sure. not, yeah, not, yeah. not fuck music. This is the Music Mastery <laughs> Podcast. But, like, first of all, did you – where? Uh, fuck where you heard it. Like, this is, this is dope that I've never even talked about or even really gotten into that much. Yeah. This is, this is a, this is a game changer. Because but how can you, but how can it, so, but, are, but like, for example, like, yeah. um, is there like, so I, I thought that dopamine just came from anything that made you happy. Yeah. That- and it does. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It does. And I'm not, I'm obviously not a qualified scientist to talk about this, but, <laughs> but there's, but there is, um, but I would definitely, after this, if you're listening, I would definitely invest in Alex Becker. I knew that's where you heard this shit. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you where, and I knew that's where, cause he talks about this yeah. mega dark mode. Yeah. What is that shit? He calls definitely. it like nightmare, crazy dragon mode. I don't know, man. It's yeah. yeah. I knew that's where you heard that shit. Dopamine Dude, detox, right? Yeah, exactly. Interesting. I've seen headlines for that shit. On got to get on on that man it's anyone listening if you are finding yourself like infinitely scrolling or yeah you have a bad addiction with yeah. with anything that's instant pleasure like smoking or vape or whatever or anything, anything that's like just that like junkie. destructive to you yeah exactly instant pleasure anything that's instant pleasure doesn't gratify you later down the road you know that you can look back on and be like wow like if for example, if you did that, if you did what you, what you know in deep, in, deep inside you, you know what I'm talking about. But if you did that today and then you look back t- tomorrow comes and then you look back on yesterday, which was today, and you think like, yeah, I, th- I feel good about what I did, you know, yesterday. Or you're like, wow, I can't believe I did that, you know? Yeah, totally. Well, dude, oh. that's so fucking deep, like what we're talking about because- It becomes, it, you can turn into a product, productive beast with that kind of stuff man like it's it's changed a lot for me man like when i'm on instagram i'm doing something on instagram i'm changing something i'm less addicted to my phone and that is huge yeah you check out my phone right now i'm gonna unlock it i have literally nothing on my on my i like nothing nothing is going on here swipe up nothing's there you have apps though i just saw you swiped and there was apps yeah, this is like the um, app library. I want to get rid of it so bad, but I hate that thing. I hate the new Apple update. It sucks. What? What is? Oh, okay. The widgets are dope, but like the app library and all the extra. Oh god. They always well, they're trying to get you. Do you? Um, yeah, man. So that's cool that you're talking about the phone. So I just recently discovered that I was literally addicted to my phone. I had to come to the realization. Uh, I want to say it was three weeks ago. I had to come to that realization because I've been similar on that not i wouldn't call it a dopamine detox for me but with the whole live hard and 75 hard exactly detox yeah detoxing from foods for example like i mean imagine i went however many days i went with not a sip or a lick of alcohol or refined sugar or refined carbs uh or or dairy for like a long time and you you end up starting to try to for example like just with food you find pleasure in other foods you know, like bananas taste so fucking good to me now because that's like, that's the sugar I can have. Like I used to not really eat oatmeal, but bro, mm-hmm. oatmeal is like a bowl of ice cream because Dude, it's like that's exactly natural what I'm sweetness. Saying. Yeah. And it's, exactly what I'm saying it's exactly. a whole nother. Yeah. Yeah. So I used to do half and half with my milk and now I do fucking almond milk and almond milk is the shit. No added sugar. And I'm like fucking all Dude, in on almond milk. Almond milk, almond milk slaps. It slapped, yeah. So, so, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, that's, yeah, what I was saying is like that's exactly what I'm talking about. So, I've had like a screen time up to like six or seven hours one in day. one day. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Like, I feel you. I literally am living on my phone, which I, is like, which is really sad when you think about it. Like, and I and what I think about all the time is like if I'm on my deathbed. Am I going to regret the, the hours that I spent on my phone? Like, what am I doing right now? What am I doing on my phone right now? And like, if you're listening, you should definitely invest in some, in some YouTube videos and, and just understand what we're talking about here. But like, yeah. there is so, seriously yeah. something because as a society as a whole, 
Yeah. Especially my generation, everyone's addicted to something, yeah. right? Something instant pleasure. Everyone's addicted. And if you can get out of that, you're going to be super successful. I know I'm going to be successful. dude. I, I'm, I can't wait to, to when I'm like 30 and I'll find this somewhere or someone finds this and sends this to me. Right. Like, do you ever think about that? <laughs> like, do you ever think like when I'm, I mean, I'm going to be 30 in three years. No, what, like when you're like, no, when you're like ball and ball and bro, like when you're like lazy, the gift. You know yeah. I, mean? I think about that all the time. Yeah. That's why I'm doing this podcast every day because look back on if Russ had this or if Drake had this, yeah. or if Kevin Gates had this, like, could you imagine if Russ, I mean, Russ did his version, right? So I'm not knocking him at all because what he did was fucking amazing. Like to do a new right. song every week. I'm just saying I want to do my version of it being like, there's video evidence of where I am right this second. And yeah. so like when the background is a skyline or, or the ocean and people are going to be like, <laughs> fuck, dude, he used to be in the garage. That's the reason I'm doing this podcast mm -hmm. every day to document exactly same thing so it's all, the, it's all for the netflix documentary yeah right it's all for the net yeah fine fuck uh which, have you seen the travis scott documentary i no, i haven't is it good oh my god dude you what's got going it. on in there dude it's all it's literally just like the build-up to Astro World. you're uh -huh. familiar with travis scott right oh very yeah i love travis okay. scott yeah man um he's fire great artist great producer insane man yeah. and so it's yeah it's all about astro world and it's all about like the build up to it and you really get up to understand you like connect with him more one and you understand like what astro world is about i never knew that it was an actual place i don't, I don't even know what it's about at all dude exactly so once you went and <laughs> and like i get like i got like goosebumps and like the adrenaline rush and i felt like i was in the crowd like in like dude it is it is an experience you definitely have to invest in it's going to inspire especially since you're an artist bro right the must watch but, so the thing with me yeah. like okay this is going to sound so weird i have to be really careful with stuff i watch because i will jump out of my seat and go into the studio for five hours straight if i watch certain things so like whenever i watch ryan leslie do you know who that is um no i don't think so okay wow cool so ryan leslie i guess maybe that was a my I don't want to say my generation, but like anybody in their mid to late twenties knows Ryan Leslie. Cause he came up when we were in high school, when I was your age, he came up because mm -hmm. he, he was putting out videos of him in the studio. He's what he's established himself in the industry and he produced um, for this girl named Cassie. Do you know who that is? No. Okay. So she, when I was again, your age, she had put out a song called me and you. That was like super famous. She had an album. Um, that okay. song, Me and You, went number one in eight different countries. It was really like a famous song. He produced that and her whole album. She's dating Diddy. She's Diddy's girlfriend now. Diddy came and swooped this girl from Ryan Leslie. So anyway, but Ryan Leslie has worked with Kanye. He's worked with many other big artists. Like look him up. You'll be like, oh, wow. Very low key because now he's fully independent. So I won't get into that. The point is, he put out videos on YouTube making songs in the studio. He plays the drums. He plays the bass. He plays the guitar. He plays piano. He can sing. He can rap, play the key, does all of that stuff. He'll right. fully produce a whole orchestra by himself, wow. like ba 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 and, and he puts them together in these really great highlight videos. And a mm -hmm. lot of people would say that he was the pioneer of in the studio making beat videos. So all the people who make beats right now, like Pat mm -hmm. Ryan, Omido, Kyle beats like ask them Kyle beats. like everybody if you ever get in contact like ask any of them yo did you ever watch Ryan Leslie I guarantee they'll all say oh yeah he was the guy because he now, was now that you say that again like over and over I've definitely heard of that yeah so he has this documentary where he kind of did like what like like I think he did it before Travis but Travis did his documentary on Astro World. this dude did a documentary he did an album called Black Mozart he went to fucking uh Spain, I think. Mm -hmm. And like him and his whole camp, like stayed at this insanely nice hotel in either Spain or somewhere in Europe, like beautiful. And like, yeah. they made music like all day, every day. He had his routine. He went to the club to like play his songs in the club to test them out. And like he was running on three, four, two to three hours of sleep 
Like he had a really weird, it was just, the whole thing is so inspiring that when I watch it, I'm like, fuck. And like, I jump up and go to the studio, like no matter what time it is. So with like Travis Scott's thing. Yeah. Same with the last dance, the Michael Jordan thing. I cannot watch that and not go to the studio. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. And it so, so it gets you yeah. so hyped up and like ready to kill it. But yeah, but anyway, yeah, I mean, that was a rant. Yeah, for sure. And and so back to like the um, the productivity and the being addicted to your phone. It's definitely it's definitely um, important to detach yourself, bro. Like, 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 and I'll find myself on. I'm working out or I'm doing. I'm just living my life like i'm doing whatever right yeah and i just pull out my phone for no reason like why like it's like built into our system and it's it's crazy because there's people and the worst thing is being aware of it and still doing it that's that's so bad that's the bro that's the worst thing um just being aware that you are addicted and then just you either don't have enough energy you don't feel like it and you're like all right whatever don't i don't even care yeah. you know and that's or the you work. give yourself some bullshit reason for why you're doing it you're like oh i just need Dude. some off time i just need a quick yeah exactly it's yeah. it's crazy that the way your yeah. brain can trick you into 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 uh you know become into doing these you know these these awful like instant pleasure things man like that's why you know that's 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 why i've been able to be so focused and consistent Sure. Um, not only in music, but like physically too, man. Yeah. Like I've been, I've been working out a lot. I've been going on runs like every day. And before that, before all this dopamine nonsense, I would hate to go on a run, man. Like I would despise going on a run. Like, like you play, like you're like, man, should I go on a run today? I'm not doing anything. It's a nice day outside. And then you think in your brain, you're like, oh, like, like it's just a gut feeling. You're like, I really don't want to go on a run. And I'm going to feel really bad if I go on a run. But then if you don't go on a run, you actually end up feeling worse. Right? No doubt. So, but then I've, I've gone through this whole dopamine detox process. I'm literally still in the middle of it. Like it, it's basically a never ending cycle. But now I actually like literally look forward to working out and going on runs. Me too. When I used to like, like, fucking like you used to hate it. it. Yeah. So that's 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 one thing that's crazy to me is like so talk you, about like the how the detox can translate to where because yeah. i know from my own experience and i'm sure you now know that like you take away these instant pleasures which are really not not only are they not productive they're destructive and you take those away your body still is craving pleasure exactly so you exactly. go toward these things that are natural pleasures that are productive is that kind of right that's right. And, but what, one thing you have to be careful is, is you cannot just remove it all at once, man. You cannot be, you can't be Jocko willing in one day. Right. Serious. Like, this is what, this is what I did. This is what other people do all the time. It's like, you got to take it one step at a time. Like, 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 but, but, but be, be mindful of what you're doing. Like if you wake up in the morning, you're like, all right, I'm gonna, you just immediately need to start thinking, that today's going to be a good day and you got to start hype. You got to be your own hype, man. Basically. Like that's what it comes down to. You basically need to tell yourself like, all right, I'm going to have healthy breakfast. We're going to have a productive day. And you know, there might be some roadblocks in the day, but I'm just going to push through and I'm going to be satisfied at the end of the day. And then you can have your, then you can train your mind to, all right, you know what? I had a good day today. I'm going to watch some Netflix, but watching Netflix for no reason. Yeah. With- doing anything before then is the worst feeling without right? earning it. yeah without earning it like if you've earned exactly. it, like i i earn- look forward to yeah i mean i've even talked about this with people recently like um i'm so regimented with my time even my downtime you know like yeah i use my downtime um very very specifically to like recharge my batteries so that the next day I can be productive because I've, I've experienced burnout a lot where I'm literally just like, fuck it, eight hours a day. Yeah. No chilling. I'm just going, it sucks. And like, it's crazy because I'll be extra productive, but I'll go to sleep and I'll be like, 
I don't even feel good about what I did today. Like, even yeah. though I grinded, like that doesn't, yeah. it didn't feel good at all. Well, that's part of the curse, man. That's just, I feel like that's just kind of in our blood. Like we're never going to be, we're never going to feel satisfied, but that's why we keep going. Uh, I don't know. I just, no, I don't think that's true. Really? Now really? I, no. Cause now I am starting to, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like it just depends on your perspective. Like I, I am not mm-hmm. in the place I want to be at, but that statement right there yeah. is like, will I ever be? Because like Andy talks about, Andy Frisella, dude, I mean, mega successful, but like he says all the time, I'm just getting started. Gary V mega successful. They're both like, yes, I'm never satisfied. So I just thought, wait a minute, why do I have to be miserable about not being satisfied when the fact of the matter is I never will be exactly might as well just, just like look for the pleasures in my journey, not in the dopamine, the instant dopamine hits, you know, rather. Exactly. I, and, that, and that's what I, you know, I've been kind of detoxing in my own way too. And I exactly. And dude, it's, and, and, and it, it really comes down. I think we have like 10 minutes left. And even if you're, I mean, you can look up as many Instagram growth hacks as you possibly can. Oh, yeah, or, right. or, and I think you ranted about this at one point. You, you were like, have you ever clicked on a YouTube video? maybe like every single YouTube video you have ever watched that wants to, that they're trying to teach you something and never even got any value from it at all. At the end, they just regurgitated the same like BS that you already know. So annoying. Gets, gets, it gets me so mad when, when it happens to me. And so, so that's why I wouldn't really, I mean, you have to focus on the hacks and oh my hashtags have to be this certain way or whatever, you know, it has to look this way. And that's what I did. That's what got me 10,000 followers. But after, afterwards, I realized, and you even helped me with this, is 100,000 is not really my goal anymore. Mm, I remember that. My goal is to be an industry producer, well-respected, well-known industry producer with a good career, obviously. Right. Right. That's where I want to be. Definitely want to go higher than that. Always want to go higher. But you know, that's where I would be, quote-unquote, comfortable. Um, but... But yeah, man, like it, it, you just, it just comes down to like, what are when your it, daily habits, man? Like, right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what you, like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing every single day? And is that going to, cause at the end of the day, like if you are, if you are like, I want to say older, like you're, you're, you know, you probably, probably like 50, 60, I, my worst fear is being that age, knowing that I could have done so much more, right? Right. Like, like just knowing that you not being where you want, knowing that I could have used my time more wisely and regretting that. That's going to be. That's my fear like, every day. Exactly. My exactly. fear is every day. Did I do enough today? Yeah. Like that's how I think of it too. Like I, 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 and I've realized like when I focus too much on the future, that, that it gives, just gives me all this anxiety. Cause what you just said is such a common fear. I obviously have the exact same fear you have. A lot of people do, yeah. but I just said, why don't I have that fear for my daily? Like, why don't I just say like my greatest fear today is if I go to sleep and feel that way about just today, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, huh, that changed that that's been happening to me, happening to me recently. And I start yeah. thinking that, and then I start planning the next day going, well, like, how do I avoid it? You avoid things like that by preparation. So like today I went on a run. Okay. Hell yeah. This man. is not a flex at all. People run way more than me. No flex but man. Last night. Flex. Well, no, but last night I put it in my fucking head. Like I had run yesterday. I did two work. I did a great day yesterday, but, but yeah. you know, at night I was done working out and I just, I put it in my head. I said, bro, go tomorrow and run five miles and either be at a 10 minute pace or less 10 minutes per mile or less. Oh, you did run five miles. Remember? Yeah. And I did that. I ran four, five miles yeah. at nine forty. You know, I said, I need to get to yeah. this. I just, I, it's stuck in my head to get this 10 minute pace. Um, and I did it, but I prepped, you know what I'm saying? I prepped last night. I had the thought and I just thought yeah. if I didn't have that thought, bro, I would have only ran like three and a half miles. I'd have been fine with that. I'm like, yes, I did three and a half exactly. miles today, but but I, and I think I DM you saying like, I want my, I want four miles to be my new minimum. It used to be two miles. Then it yeah. was three. Now I'm like, no, let's make four miles my new minimum. Like this week it's four miles. Next week it'll probably be five. 
Like I'm just yeah. trying to every week I'm trying to up my minimum mileage um, every week, you know, and, and try yeah. to keep a 10 minute pace. Um, For sure. But, but yeah, like just what I'm saying is like that preparation is how you can avoid that, that feeling, you know? Yeah. And, and for anyone that, you know, is sort of, I would get, you know, I say in my generation um, or even older, I, you know, I, I'm, I don't really feel qualified to give advice to older people, but, <laughs> but anyone in my generation, you know, Gen Z, I hate our generation so bad, but dude, how old are you, by the way? Like people don't know, like you keep saying that. And I bet people listening don't know how old you are. I'm 15, but dude, <laughs> not it's, it's, I don't like for anyone listening to this, like, by the way, I mean, maybe we should, maybe I shouldn't be impressed, but like, I'm impressed at the fact that you're 15 years old. And at first I was impressed with the Instagram following, but then I, as I've gotten to know you more, I mean, the stuff you say and talk about is shit that like 40, 50, 60 year olds don't think they're not mature enough and they're not tough enough to realize stuff you're saying. I mean, people, my age, double your age, don't understand the idea of habits, dopamine detox, exercise, like focus, like shit that you're saying is like, like anyone listening to this, I'm sure you didn't know he was 15 because I didn't until you told me we zoomed and I looked at your face. I'm like, wait, how old is this motherfucker? Cause you talk on the phone. You don't sound 15 either. You had a deep ass voice, but you do sound voice. older, bro. And then you, <laughs> yeah. I see you. I'm like, this dude, there's this dude must be in college. He must be 18 and then you're like i'm 15 and i'm like whoa crazy like my yeah, bro i mean if you're listening to this right now you're literally i mean you are you are you aren't listening to any polished bullshit like gary v nonsense like nothing is edited this is straight from our conversation man like this is this is the rawest form of content you're ever going to get yeah and that's the crazy part to me as like you know put this on spotify or not it was still a dope conversation right and that's I what said, my whole podcast that's the premise of the whole thing yeah that's 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 dope um I, 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 i'm I, so I i'm so anti like i'm very i'm pretty anti-crafted content like i don't like to do it um yeah yeah i mean especially with these like you know i'll even say this i'd love to say this on the podcast yeah and say, tell it to you so you know how i just fucking interviewed how to rap drew the other day the am i thinking of the same guy as he has like a green lamborghini has his like no i'm not thinking i'm that's thinking smart of smart rapper that's smart rob rapper. level yeah, that's a different guy i haven't different. gotten him yet i haven't gotten him no how to rap drew or how okay. to rap he has like a big youtube following literally teaching people how to rap very yeah. good youtube channel um mm-hmm. big following you know 388,000 subs like the dude's popping you know he's doing his thing and I had to talk to him. It was sick. But before I talked to him, <clears throat> the idea popped in my head. You got to do a lot of prep. You got to have a bunch of questions ready. And I did. I did great preparation. I looked at his, like, I found out stuff about him. So the intro was, like, amazing. And it just, lit, like, made him look good, made me look good. But I got into the podcast, and I started yeah. getting too crafted with the questions, and the transitions weren't smooth. And I started realizing, I was like, wait, dude, this isn't me. This isn't natural. It's not organic. Like I can tell the vibe. And I just stopped. I was like, fuck these other questions. Like, let me just go off what he's saying and talk to him. And it, and and then the the second half of the pod was to me much better because we ended up getting gems out of him that were like, dude, uh, I've made the exact same mistake, dude. Like I literally had a one note document of all of the questions. And I thought about it for like 30 minutes ahead of time. And I would write them all down make sure the questions had no typos so I wouldn't mess up or make sure like it sounded and I would like practice them. It's not, what you, it's not good, man. No. You cannot, you can't, you have to always, you have to be your genuine self. And that also comes from like in your social sort of relationships, like sure yeah. that was on a podcast, but imagine but people do that every day in real life. Hmm. Hey, right? oh, what do you mean? Like what, what, like what they put mean? on a, they put on a show. <laughs> You know, they put on, they they become like their own, you know, like, and I do, I've done this all the time. Like this used to be like, and now I just don't care, man. I I just, it's the most gratifying and freeing feeling (laughs) free. It's the most gratifying free, free, like that, you know, you just feel like you've been, 
you just you've just escaped from this you know this curse bro and it's crazy you just you just be yourself anyone, exactly just be yourself man for anyone listening like you know you shouldn't really want to fit in with anyone right you shouldn't tr- you shouldn't change yourself to fit in because you know the people that stand out are the most successful anyways yeah people that aren't with the pack you know the people that do their own thing regardless of what other people think of them those are some pretty dangerous people yeah you know yeah, that's real and i'm sure and i'm sure you've probably been judged i've probably been judged you've probably been judged for this podcast like who's this crazy guy in the garage doing his podcast i, I don't know maybe in reality know. in reality you're just passionate about it dude Right. And you're just being your genuine self and there's nothing wrong with that. And for them to go out of their way and feel, you know, and try to put negative energy on you, man. Right. I don't know if they do though. I don't, I don't even, I have no idea. I haven't gotten any negative. Well, you don't know. That's the thing, you know, I don't know or nor do I give a shit either. I don't exactly. It doesn't affect me. Yeah. I I think that like, just based on what you're saying, we'll end it off on this. This is a great topic. And, and it's just, you know, at the end of the day, like, it totally depends on what people want out of their life. And I think that everybody, no matter what your job or your income is, everybody is capable of being a leader. Even if you're in a nine to five and you're not technically a corporate leader, you have a family, people look at you, people watch you. I mean, just if you walk into a coffee shop to get your regular morning cup of coffee and you see a lid on the ground, if you pick it up and throw it away, that's like a, very micro form of leadership because someone else is going to see that and you never fucking know. Somebody might see that and be like, wow, like I should pick up litter or another person might see that and be like, that's crazy. I just saw a documentary last night about litter and that guy did it. Like think it to I'm gonna existence. Go, I'm going to go do a service project. And pick you up never fucking coffee. know what can happen from you just picking up litter or you going to get that cup of coffee and saying to the barista or whoever's taking your order, you know, they have their name tags like, Hey, Shirley, like what's going on? And she looks at you going, I know you read my name tag, but the fact that you used my name means a lot to me. Hey, right. Shirley, what's up? How's it going today? Like that is a form of leadership in a way that's you standing out. That's you saying, Hey, I care about you as a human. And I, about the phones, like if you're standing in line, and you're maybe the third or fourth person, you're every motherfucker is this in line. They're on their phone. Dude, They're staring oh at their phone. God. What if instead of being on your fucking phone, you tap the person in front? Well, now with COVID, everybody freaks out if you touch them. But like, <laughs> if you just like, hey, like, I love those shoes. Like, if you, what if you said that to the dude in front of you and you're a dude? Yo, dude, where'd you get those shoes? Yeah. I say that shit to people all the time. Yo, bro, where'd you get those shoes? And dude looks, oh, I got them. Oh, I'm like, bro, I fuck with that light brown. Like, yeah. they look like they're crispy. Like, I need exactly. to get my shoe. You never Instant know. Smile on their face. You feel good. They feel good. That's leadership right there. That's standing yeah. out. Like yeah. literally, bro. And I'm sure I'm sure you'll vibe with this. My whole like life, but even more from when I was 17 years old. My whole thing in my head was just, how do I do things better than everyone? And how do I do things different? How do I do things that, if you looked at them you'd be like, damn, that's fucking crazy. Like that's yeah. just always mm-hmm. been my prerogative. And that's the same with like, I want to say something where I'm like, or I want other, I want to create, that's what creating a legend is. It's like, if somebody says, yo, you don't know Lizzie the gifted, like he did a new podcast episode every day for 365 days. I want people to say that. All right. Same with Jake. Like, yo, you know, this dude, Prism <laughs> HQ, that's- you know, like, yo, do you know Prism? Right. Like, you know that that dude's just some fucking 15 year old kid from North Carolina. Like people are like, what? Like, yeah, he built up a fucking Instagram of 15 K and he was 15. You know, I love telling people that who are 30 and 29 and 28 and they make excuses for why they don't put out content. I'm like, you, you know who this is? And I show them like, this is a 15 year old. Seriously? Go, You've done that before? Fuck like, yeah. I've done that hell of times. Oh my God. So many times. No, you know, this dude is 15 and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, bro. Like you got to put your excuses away. Like this is a fucking kid. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's, it's, it comes down to, you know, if you want to make excuses and we all make excuses, you know, whatever. But if you want to make excuses, just think, just know that your future self 
is going to be so pissed off at you, man. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Totally. Think about, think about the time. Think about, think about the earth, man. Like think about, just think about like the entire universe. And from the beginning of time, we are literally alive for no more than a millisecond, right? Like we, yeah. our lifespans are, are shorter than like tortoises. You know, like we are, we do not like, I'm, I'm yeah. serious. Man. I think about this That's all the time. Right. Bro, we only have, and then you think about it, dude, like, like it's, it's Christmas time, right? We only have, and I know you're Jewish. Hanukkah. We only have like 80 Hanukkahs or yeah. 80 Christmases, right? Like, yeah, bro, that's not a lot. We only have like 80, 90 birthdays, right? Like it, it, and you think about it, it's like, whoa, man, I'm really, I'm really wasting time. You know how fast 2020 is gone, bro? Like it felt like, like I can't even remember what I was doing in March, you know? And it just went by like that and boom, it's already December. We're already, it felt like September, like two days ago, you know? So like your yeah, time. Yeah, wow, it did, huh? That's crazy. Exactly. Like your time is so limited and it's going by. So you can make excuses. You, you can make excuses or not, but just know that someone is outworking you and they're not going to feel sorry for you once they're at the finish line and you aren't and you're making excuses and you're like, man, why, why, you know, why am I not like this guy? Well, it's because you're not working hard enough, right? Yeah. It's because you're making excuses and yeah. you're not being as consistent, right? Everything takes time, but bro, you got to be like dedicated. There are other people out there that are hungry. Yeah. And they're like, doing it. Hungry. They're not, and they're not just saying they're hungry. They're like, exactly. You can see what they're doing. Yeah. I kind of always wanted to be that icon of where I wanted to put that pressure too. Like that's, that's another part of, you know, my motivation is like, you know, first of all, who, who do I compare myself to? Like, who's my competition? You know, like yeah. now my competition is different than it was last year. Like last year I thought of myself as, all right, I'm just trying to put myself above the normal SoundCloud rapper. And now I'm like normal SoundCloud rapper. Like I'm doing a pod every day. They, they can't touch me. Like there's no rappers touch it. I'm a rapper still. So I'm like trying to put myself on the Legion Gabe level, the Adam Ivy level, the Cur oh, Curtis yeah. King, Kyle Beats. Like now, and then even after that, you know, really that's not even, I'm not shooting for any of those dudes I just named anyways. Yeah. I'm really shooting for how do I get as legendary right. as J. Cole and Kendrick Man, Lamar? I was you know? literally thinking about that exact same concept like today. Like, like I used to think that like Legion beats was like, like I used to like, like look up to them, you know, and they are dope. Like I'm not, he's a human not, being though. I'm not knocking them at all. No, I know I, what you're I, saying. Totally. I used to like idolize these people, these like content creators. Like I still, I still fucking do like in a way like, dude, and that's not healthy because you're putting yourself automatically at a lower level. Right? Yeah. That's, that's exactly it. Now to respect that person. It's right. absolutely a good thing because they've done some stuff, but to say like, to put them at this pedestal makes you feel like you're not able to get to that, which is, right. that's where it gets exactly. unhealthy. Cause Legion exactly. beats, like I, like I met the guy, right. Sat with him for four hours. I still think of him the way I thought of him before, but seeing that he was a human being and seeing that he's flesh and bone, two arms, two legs, just like me. And he's just like really organized, really dedicated. You know, there was, there was, there was a, uh, you know, I was in the studio, right? It was Friday. It was the Friday of the takeover. And I was vibing with the, with the squad and all the producers. Gabe had come in during my recording session. I walked out. I was like, holy shit. Like, what's up, dude? Like, I finally met him in person, gave him a hug, all that. Was in there for about an hour or so, got out. We're eating snacks. And I see upstairs, there's like a little upstairs, like office space. I'm like, oh, the door's closed. So I say to one of the dudes, um, oh, yo, is Gabe up there? And I, I really wasn't going to go up and say anything to him, but I kind of made it seem like I was going to walk up. I really wasn't, though, but I just said, yo, is Gabe up there? And he just was like, yo, do not go up there. I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not. He's like, I know, but, like, don't. Like, when that door Wait, is closed. Wait, why? What was, what was going on up there? He was just like, bro, when the door is closed, we don't fucking go up there. We don't ask him. We don't text him. We don't talk to him. Like, when that door is closed, don't fuck with Gabe. Because Gabe he's in the zone. Fucking, he's fucking focused. That Dude, man is in his cave. He doesn't grinding. fuck. He doesn't fuck around. He does not fuck around. I mean, I was in the stu I was in the studio. Clean. The whole space is clean. His office, clean, nice. And he <laughs> told me. I said, "How do you organize your time?" He said. Oh, dude, I got to go. But like, I want to tell you this one thing because it's a gem. But he, I had said, what, what do you, what do you, how do you organize your time? He goes, I literally did kind of like a time detox where he's like for four days, 
I had a, I had a pen and a paper. Every mm, I, I had a time I had a timer on my phone, and every fifteen minutes, I wrote down what I just did in the past fifteen minutes, including going to the bathroom, washing my hands, on the phone, anything. And I yeah. did that for four days straight. And I looked at my time log, and I just realized like where I was really putting my time, where I was wasting my time. He's like, so. Like I'll go in the studio or I'll go, I'll be up here working doors closed. Like the team knows not to come up here, but I'm not in here for sometimes I'm in here for hours, but most of the time I'll just be in here for like a quick hour, just really focused. And then I'll leave. It's not always like a really long time. So when that guy, when Yanni was the producer who told me don't go up there, when he told me that and then Gabe told me that I was like, Oh, like it, it clicked. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. That's crazy. And, and then there's, and then there's people with seven hour screen time. You and me, I, I've done that too, right? Right, exactly. right. Could you imagine if that seven hours was spent? What if you just sat here on, in the studio with no phone? What would happen in seven? Ooh, oh my God, bro. seven Jake, hours. Oh my gosh, that's, that's like probably- That's the time you could be spent be making spent. that platinum beat or that song that could go platinum. Like That idea that you just had could have changed you and your family's legacy and life and everything completely- but you're on your phone watching TikTok. Like, like I, so what I do is I take my phone, I just chuck it across the room. On, I do that too. You know, and I'm like, get out of here, man. Like, I'm, I need to get in this zone. I don't care what's going on. I don't yeah. care if there's an emergency. I don't care if my house is burning down. Just get this thing off of me because every single time you look yeah. at it, you're like, oh, I got it. I got to check. Boom. And like, is there really an emergency that's going to exactly. be more important than? Like the things you yeah. said, like if your house was burning down, obviously, dude, you'd get the <laughs> fuck out of there. Like, but how likely is that? Like that doesn't always happen right. to people. Most people are trying to steal your time because somebody's head, it pops in their head being like, yo, I got to text Jake and ask what time we're hanging out. Or yo, I got to text Jake because I got to talk to him about something. Yeah. That doesn't affect you. That's their fucking problem. That's not your problem. But see, the problem is we make it our problem because we're addicted to looking at that notification. And the idea yeah. of what we're talking about is we're talking about Gabe, Gabe Schillinger, and you idolized him. And you I did too. Gabe, you think Gabe gives a, gives a fuck whether you text him or not, man? He's not even, yeah, no. like he's not a big he's... phone guy. Like I, <laughs> we, yeah. But the point was somebody like him, I said, bro, like for four hours I spent with him, all I wanted to do was pick the brain of a guy who's built two different million dollar businesses. And at the end of the day, what I found out was, focus like the number one word it, yes he works hard but it wasn't just about hard work it's like no it's focus and systems yeah you know what i mean how does a guy with two million dollar businesses and 10 employees across the world manage his time he's like there's systems systems check-ins frequent communication and and um and and, and just like focusing my time you know what yeah. I mean? And I was like, oh my God, like this guy is not an alien. This guy is not an anomaly. He yeah. just focused. And, I, and that, that's what we were getting at. You're talking about idolizing people and yeah. all the things we're talking about, you know, just to wrap this up and really finish the episode off. What we're talking about is putting systems in your life and taking things away that are bad, putting positive systems into your life habits and taking away the things like, Anything with immediate dopamine, phone is the biggest one in our generation. So, yeah, yeah. you know, Ooh. final thoughts. Like, where can people yeah. find you? Where is the best place to kind of get in contact with you and see your content? Yeah, um, Instagram at prism.hq. It might switch to Jake Prism. I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm, I'm sort of in the process of making it my personal page. All right. Um, well, for as, now it's fine. And if you click the yeah. link in the description, it's going to be the same no matter what you. For uh, sure. For yeah. sure. And I think you sent me this. Um, you sent me an, in, an interview with Dame Dash and I was, and I watched that. I watched the full thing. Did you? And uh, he said one thing that really stuck with me and it was, and bro, Dame Dash is a total badass, bro. You got to watch I'm that whole. Really badass. I love that guy. Come on, man. He he walked in there like it was his place and he just And he destroyed. left. <laughs> yeah. Like it was his. Yeah, totally. He's so yeah. sick. And so he uh he said I would he said um he said I want to be remembered. Um I want my family to have a legacy. You know, you want would he said, Do you want to would you rather be remembered um 
for your first name or your last name. And even though that sounds simple, it has actually a lot of meaning to it. Do you want to be remembered for you made a lot of money, cool guy, you respect, you well respected, and then you die and then it's just whatever, right? Or do you want your last name, which is more, you know, more of an important part of your name, in my opinion, obviously, but do you want that to carry on for future generations and you want to have a lasting legacy or do you just want to be remembered as, you know, Lee, right? Ooh, this is Lee. He's got a Lambo. Pretty cool. He's got some money. He's successful. And then There's, you're 80 and then right. you're dead. And then it's like, okay, cool. But like at the same time, you could, you know, you instead of, you know, fo- basically what, you know, have, have the right mindset towards where you're going. You know, you don't want to have the mindset of, I want to make a lot of money. I want yeah. to be, you know, like, I want to be like, like ball and ball and, you know, and right. we all do, but like, you got to have a legacy behind that. You got to have a more, a, bigger purpose behind that right yes i want to make music to make people happy i want to make music so i can make money so i can go out and do projects and make people happy and for less fortunate people give them opportunities like that's that's like that's the real that's what it is right it's not really i want to have a nice car or whatever i want to you know pay you know i want to give money to my parents back and all that like you know i want to do that but like the end of the day you got to figure out what your what your purpose is and you got to stick to it so right um but yeah man i appreciate you having me on here hell yeah dude and i want to we should do more episodes where we, we have like, like a one specific- of these <laughs> we should do one of these a month man because i'm trying to oh i was trying to do once a week with you <laughs> dude, i'd be down i would love to hop on yeah i mean it makes it Seriously, easier for me yeah. to yeah yeah so anyway guys if you got value out of the episode of course don't forget to share this with a friend we are doing organic growth we are organically growing the podcast <laughs> like i'm not running ads like i'm not not yet a, anyway and uh yep. you know if you if you're looking for any good tips on how to like any tips on music production in general or if you just want to get involved with what jake's got going on i would recommend it no matter if you're a rapper a producer whatever like literally anybody listening to this get involved with jake jake's the kind of guy you could dm him set up a podcast and have a great interview and create a great dude, relationship with a dude. Not even yeah, yeah, exactly. Who's coming it's up. Just D bro. Like not even, I respond to almost all the DMS that I get unless they're spam, obviously. Right. 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 Like if you send me a song, I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to give you feedback. Right. If you want to work, I'm down to work. Right. You know, pr- production wise. If you want to do an interview, dope. If you want to have a collab, you want to collaborate between brands like dude, I'm so open right now. Like, He'll do it. He'll hundred percent do send me it. A so. DM and let's, let's make it happen for yep. sure. Jake, thank you, brother. I got a dip. Guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Appreciate it.